Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Florian Nungu, and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And I'm joined, as you are now used to, with my friend and colleague at Maxwell Leadership, Madalina Guinesco. Hi, Madalina. Hello, Florian, and hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today to discuss about leadership. Absolutely. I love my Monday. So this is the highlight of my day. I prepare for this and I just cannot wait to be with you and with our viewers. So uh, today we, we talk about something which is a little bit interesting and I also think challenging, right? So we, we're looking at how can we engage and motivate every single team member? What do you think wow. about that? That's a, that's the key word. I, I, I have to admit every single team member is not like motivating the whole team but every single individual in my team this is actually a very uh, good question because many leaders are, are asking themselves that are asking us the coaches about that how can i engage my my team how can i communicate with each individual person how do i know how to communicate with them what engages them in uh, in uh, in the productivity of the team so i would like to start with the with the question first of all with the questions that I have prepared for today, so everybody will uh, will hear uh, what you advise them to use to motivate their members. So my my first question on the list is: It possible to motivate every single person in the team? What do you think? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Thank you for that. So I think it's possible, and I know that might be challenging. And let me let me tell you why I think it's because. If we're able to create that kind of personal experience, we're definitely going to be able to motivate and engage every single one of our team members. The challenge is that we're looking at a team many times as more, more or less as you know, a group of individuals. And, and those individuals, we sometimes treat them as, you know, as we were working on an assembly line, which means that the same kind of operation over and over again and the same kind of solution works for whatever we're producing on that line and, and that's not the case with with our people because each of us are different so each of us are motivated by different things and if us leaders were able to create a personal experience for our employees that will definitely feel uh, give them the feeling that they are valued think about how much time and resources we spend into creating a customer experience, right? There are companies that offer you, you know, tools to create an ex extraordinary customer experience. But how much time and money do we spend into creating a wonderful and an extraordinary and amazing employee experience? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Not that I much. I have to right? admit, yeah, I have to admit if I, in my experience, not many companies are doing that. They they focus more on the clients and customers uh, and less on the employees. And that would be a tricky part because uh, if I can share with everybody, I really love the quote and that was an eye opening for me, the quote from uh, Sir Richard Branson. Treat your, treat your employees in the best way you can and they the employees will treat your clients the best way they can so it's just a matter of not focusing on the clients but focusing on your employees because if you focus on your clients then you will lose the engagement with your with your with your employees they will be frustrated they will be overcharged yet they will work over time they will they will do so many things to please and to fulfill all the clients need and it will be less to think about themselves and that will be very frustrating for employees and if you Absolutely. if you if you want to do that with your employees then with the clients it will it will be um, um it will come just like that it will come very easily so that's Absolutely. a very good point Florine. and and i would add to that because it's it's even you made a, such a great point there with that quote and that was also on my mind because i was thinking like how can we even how can someone if i'm an employee on a team right and i'm in charge of customer service right how can i offer a great customer service if i don't feel great how can i offer value to a client if i don't feel valued right how can i be nice with a client if i don't feel that my manager is nice with me right 
how can I value a client if I don't feel valued? So it's 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 almost impossible. Like like you know, Richard Branson was absolutely right with that. But you don't have to be Richard Branson to really get that. Just think about how can we offer something that we do not have. I cannot. John Maxwell says you cannot export that which you do not have. In other words, like if I don't feel valued, I cannot, you know, wholeheartedly export value. That's just human human nature, right? You know, if I don't feel loved, I cannot export that kind of love towards clients, right? And so it's, I don't know what stops us in not doing that more often and, and focus more on our people, but it's, um, I find it strange. I hope mostly more leaders actually understand this and they, and they get it and, and they focus more on, on creating a customer, sorry, an employee experience rather than a customer experience. You, 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 you said you ask a question. I don't know why leaders don't do this often. I think because they are not aware, maybe. Maybe they are not aware. So this is why we are here to, to increase the awareness of leaders. So if you know that you want to motivate your uh, employees and your colleagues, please, please watch this and share with any other leaders that might find valuable. Um, so that's a, so your conclusion is that we can motivate every single team member, right? Yeah, absolutely, we can. And, and I will just add something to what you said about maybe we are not aware of focusing on creating a, an employee experience, yes, and then yes. we're maybe focusing on creating a customer experience. I, I think it's also that is not related to any kind of goal. So, so we, I know many companies also measure employee engagement, right? So we have these tools, we have these apps, maybe people have it on their phone or logging into a platform, and they kind of gauge or, or share how they feel. Uh, but, but that's again, this is again applying one size fits all. So in other words, you know, I have a set of areas that I want my employee to rate me and I give them access to a platform where we have an app and they go in and rate me. But but there is, you know, how many comments do come in there? Like if you don't spend time one on one with your people, right, if you don't create that personal experience for them, right, then, then they will just tick a box or maybe say, well, OK, you know, five on a scale from one to 10 doesn't help you or seven or, or eight. So no one asks me anything. I fill in, I check the box because who cares about those anyway, right? What do what does the company do with those? So I think it also has to be linked to the, to the, to the leader's goals. So we have goals around customer satisfaction and customer attention, right? So unless we have goals around employee satisfaction, employee engagement, and employee experience, uh, you know, we're not going to focus enough on those. So I think there's something. Sometimes we are aware, but if it's not if it's not measured, right? John Maxwell says, "What gets rewarded gets done." So if we don't reward for someone creating a great experience, then they will focus on what they are asked to do. Like if your manager or your supervisor asks you, you know, how are we doing with customer satisfaction? Whenever I ask you how are we doing with employee satisfaction, guess where we're where we gonna focus. <laughs> I think with the employee satisfaction and especially the anonymous surveys, um, also from my experience, people don't like to feel that. Or even worse, they just will feel with 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, or very well, very, very well, very well. And it's actually it's a false perception. Yeah. Right. Just they they want the survey to be done and they put 10 for uh, from from top to, to bottom or they put even very well for from top to bottom. And that won't ha won't help either the employee because they did it. They won't share their frustrations in case they have and neither for the leader because they don't actually know what is the real what, what is the reality in the team. And we, we talked about the reality in a previous Hello. video. Um, I have another. I have another another question on my list that I'm checking the list now, so I don't forget the questions. Uh, if we if we can if we can motivate every single individual in the team, how can we do that? Yeah. So, so I, I think what we could do is we could start with what we started talking about. That will be creating a personal experience, a very very personalized experience, and that will include, for example. Um, that would include anything from how the person wants to be communicated with and how do they want to have, for example, the 
one-on-one -on -one communication. So if you're the leader of a team and you have you know people working with you in the team and you have your one-on-one -on -one discussions with them, which I'm again perplexed of, of when I hear leaders that do not have that, because unless you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion in private, then you're not going to really know how the person feels and how the person performs and there's something that goes on in, in their lives and, and all those things. And when I say personalized experience, it's like if you think about the different personality styles that we have on our team, because I say diverse, diverse personality, it's actually the first sign of diversity. So before we go to gender, nationality, language and everything, Personality is the first degree of diversity. So with different personalities, they would prefer for you as a team leader to actually communicate and with them and create a, a different environment. So for example, someone that is like me, you know, outgoing and like to have you know fun activities, we might want to have a lunch out. So we go outside the office, we have lunch, me and my manager, or, or I will take my employees on, on a lunch meeting yeah. and we're going to discuss there, right? So it will be very informal. Right? We're just going to have lunch. We're just going to have coffee. We're just going to chat. Right? What is something which is very common right now, you know, after people getting back uh, to offices or out from COVID, it's something that is called walk and talk. Right? Let's just have a walk. Let's go out of the office and have a walk around the office. Maybe if you are in a nice area, just have a walk. And, and, and just yeah. take that kind of time together. For some, they would like a structured time. They would like to know that, you know, I want to know exactly when my one-on-one -on -one discussion with my manager is because I want to prepare. I want to know that well ahead of time, right? I want the more structured, uh, you know, personalities on our team would want to have that ahead of time and know the agenda, what we're going to discuss so they can prepare. If you just ask them, do you have time for a chat? They'll be like, what happened? Did I do something wrong? And so then as a leader, we really need to have all that. We, uh, first of all, we need to have that knowledge about our employees and then be able to offer that personalized experience and create the kind of one-on-one -on -one meetings that matches the person's style and their actually their expectations. So mm -hmm. some would want it very formal, talking about goals. Some would want it very personal, talking about family and what they did over the weekend. For some, they would like to have a little bit of chit chat in the beginning and small talk before they get to the goals. And some will only want to have it very informal. So if we don't know this about our team, it's very difficult for us to create that kind of personalized experience. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. And I actually, that raised another, well, list of questions in my mind, because um, like I said, uh, talking to leaders and understanding that they have this difficult difficulty to, find out the personality of the people um here is another question that i want you to ask first and uh, i can maybe share my my experience with it how can if i am a leader and let's say i'm new to a to a team or even if i'm not new to the team but i don't know the personalities of my team people so of every individual person if I would talk to John, I would definitely know this is his personality. If I would talk to Mary, this is her personality. So if I don't know the personality of uh, each and single team member, how can I make sure that I know their personalities? Yeah. Not, not well, me try, uh, one more thing here, not me trying to be too invasive. All right. That's, okay. So, so you're not place, yeah. considering you're not considering taking one of our assessments, right? So you know we have assessments at the John Maxwell team where we can actually, uh, you know, we can help yeah. leaders. But so so you would you would want to know like if if you know even someone before joining your team, right? So you meet with maybe a candidate, right? How can we gauge, right? Um, okay, that's a great yeah, question. That, uh, it takes us on 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 a. <laughs> I think we can spend you know a whole episode on that so maybe we we'll touch it on it but let me ask let me answer that very quickly so I think what I would do is first of all I will look at how the person actually uh, you know communicates and how they conduct themselves in the workplace or or if I meet with them outside the workplace and, and I will pay attention to some clues so first of all I would like to look at is the person more extroverted or introverted in other words are they the one kind of uh, let's say taking control over the conversation, directing the conversation in the areas that they want us to discuss, 
or at least are there when I ask a question, like they talk about 20 minutes and, and do not stop. So, so th that's a good sign that they are an extrovert, yeah. right? The other, the other type of people could be more laid back, a little bit, you know, more introverted, and they would like to maybe, uh, they would like to, for you to ask the questions. And, and those questions would be either answered in a more informal and also long way, or maybe very formal and very to the point, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. with these four things, I already kind of gauge, like, is, are they extroverted or introverted? Are they more data-oriented? And they ask, they, you know, if I ask a pointed question, they give me a pointed answer. Or are they a little bit more relaxed? And so we talk a little bit about themselves and the family. So, so this will be the first things that will help me understand yes. kind of where they gauge, right? And, and based on that, uh, I, I will then kind of know if the person wants me to kind of control the conversation and take over and direct it in the areas where, where you know, I, I add value to them, but also where they feel comfortable. Or if they will kind of take control over the conversation and direct it and, and ask me things, right? Some people do that. And even some candidates at an interview, they kind of take control. So, okay, let me ask you, because I'm not sure if I want to be an employee on your team. And so kind of flip the, you know, the roles <laughs> in the interview. So, so th that, that tells you. That's the you, ideal one. <laughs> yeah, th that, that tells you uh, if they are a little bit more, you know, outgoing and, and more direct. And, and then you want to match whatever you see on the other side, you want to match that, right? So if the person doesn't feel comfortable in, in answering any personal you know, questions, you don't go there, right? You keep it more formal. If you see that they are happy to share about their personal life, then, then you might want to uh, value that, maybe share yourself as well, because they feel that uh, you know, it, it's, that's what they expect from you too. So, so just from having some time with the person, seeing if the person is on time or if, if they're late for the appointment, that also tells, tells me some, something, something about, about them. So I, I would, I would yeah. first of all, I would have a, a way of opening the meeting and then I will kind of see if, if they expect me to kind of continue setting the agenda or they have some questions that they want me to, to answer. So then they flip it over. So that will give me the first impression, extrovert, introvert. And then mm -hmm. through those, you know, uh, first interaction, I'm going to gauge if they are uh, a little bit one of the more informal experience or a more formal experience. If they only want to stay business oriented and they talk about results and very specific numbers, percentages, achievements, Actions, or they talk yeah. exactly, or they talk more about uh, feelings and, and and members and family and and how well we work together as a team. So that will will help any leader to kind of gauge where the person is. And so the only thing is to just for us to not be ourselves. I know this sounds strange, but but in that moment we want to focus on the other person, right? How can I create a personalized experience for you if I focus on myself? If I only yeah. come with the with my agenda and if I only hit my points and, and I don't give you you know the chance to you know really create something that matches you. So mm -hmm. at that moment, whatever I see on the other side, I try to mirror because that tells me this is how they want to be communicated. This is the kind of meetings that they want. So that will be like just non-invasive, non-intrusive way to kind of gauge who do we have on your team. But, mm -hmm. but if mm -hmm. you're interested to really mm -hmm. get a, 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 an assessment, then, then we have those. So, so, but for a leader that doesn't have a, um, any, any tools and they don't want to you know, be intrusive, that will be just the, the highlight. So pay attention to the words they are using, to the way they are expressing themselves. And I can add one single step, well, one starting point for everybody as a leader who wants to identify the personality of the person in front of them. So not only the leaders, but also uh, if you want to do this with your uh, people, with, with people in your family, with your friends, with somebody you just meet in a business meeting, it doesn't matter. So um, I found out one important question that you can ask to find to identify the personality of a person. Uh, if you ask them, how, how was your day? Or how was your weekend? How did you spend your holiday? So something like very, um, a very neutral topic. How was your day? 
the way they describe their day, you can definitely tell what is the personality. So this is a simple question. It's non-intrusive. It's just asking how is your day? And that is just for you to identify what is the actually some keywords and how they describe that specific point. You can identify what are the personalities. And yes, of course, we have some tools that we can use. And I also use them in, in identifying the personalities of people and helping them to identify their own personalities. And I think we can discuss about that, as you said, in a, new, in a different meeting. Because I would like to go to the next question. I, I think this will be last on our list today. I, I think we, we have, we yes. have some, um, I, I think, on, on the when creating a personalized experience, I think we have some more things that I will want to add there. Uh, we probably, okay. so what was your next question? So we can keep that for the next time. Oh, the next question is, um, um, what are the things, some, some of the things that a leader can do to motivate the team members? Right, yeah. So that I think that, the absolutely. So I think we are on the same page. So, so one, the first one to create this personalized experience, right? And we talk about a different type of, meetings or how to have those meetings with the people and we also give a little bit of um you know instructions and, and and keys for people to be able to identify what personalities they have and i love your question into how how was your day because definitely it put them at ease and they will actually use the kind of language that they want they want us to use as well so, so that's brilliant but but what we can do also more like that the number one the number two steps would be to link their their goals with a team goal so in other words um we're looking at mm, yes. identify what are their goals i mean why i why are they even coming to the office this was a question that i loved asking people when we meet in person and we were networking i asked them what makes you jump out of bed in the morning Hell yeah that was a great question right so I mean, do you even jump out yeah, of bed in the morning, or or do you, you crawl just down, crawl. <laughs> right? Do you roll, right? How do, you, yeah. right? Because that that's that says a lot about their passion for what they're doing, right? So for me, when we do that and we're able to link the goals of the team with a person personal goals, that's when magic happens. Because at the end of the day. We are all motivated by something, but most leaders do not know what their teams are motivated by. And this leads yes. me to, to number three here, which is for the leader to know their people's personal goals and dreams. And this is actually where, where we should spend most of the time. There is a, a great book by Matthew Keeley called The Dream Manager. And the whole idea in that book is that they they kind of hire a person just to be the dream manager to just manage people's dreams. So in other words, would meet with people one on one in the in the organization, and and this person will not even be part of the leadership team or anything like that. Just kind of an, almost like an outside consultant, but just helping them to for for the organization to help people achieving their goal. So what they would do, they will, mm -hmm. they will help people to maybe raise fund for, for a scholarship. They will help people for maybe a raise fund and, and get financing for buying a house. And this will be, you know, personal goals of their employees. And what they would do, they would use, you know, the company's resources to help the employees fulfill their personal goals. So in other words, if we don't know why Madalena comes to office, I cannot know how to motivate Madalena. Maybe Madalena just now in this period of her life wants to maybe study, right? And so for Madalena, if I would propose her maybe a salary raise or maybe I'll propose her a new project, she'll say, well, at this time, actually I'm looking for decreasing my work time because I want to study. I want to focus on study. So whatever I'm, I'm trying to motivate Madalena with, and, and if this is more of a one size fits all, is probably not going to match her goal because her goal might be very different than Florence's goals and Mary's goals and John's goals. Some would be maybe in their in this season of their life they might be having children and they need more time off. And what motivated me like one year ago is not what motivates me now. And so unless we're able to really create that personal connection with the person, so their 
comfortable and feel safe to share their personal goals, knowing that they will not be judged, that this will not be used against them, we're not really able to motivate them. Because at the end of the day, we are all motivated by our personal goals. People do not come to office to help Madalena or Florin achieve their goals. No, they're not, they don't come to office to they achieve. They have their own, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, right? So at the end they of have the, their own goals, yeah. This is what so many leaders forget. They say, oh, this is so fun to work with us. So people are excited. Well, try to, try to you know, just say, well, okay, you know what? We're really going through some tough times. Um, we'll not be able to pay you for the next two weeks. Let's see who, how many people will show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see? So that, it that's... depends on the goal. It depends on the goal. I heard Absolutely. people that they, they stayed in the same workplace even though they weren't paid for one, two months because the goal for them was to be in that team, to be in that company, to learn a lot, to develop themselves. And they had other pos other opportunities. Of course, uh, they had some money from us somewhere else and they didn't get paid uh, they they need to get to get the money from somewhere else. But I heard uh, some examples of people who stayed even though they were not paid, but they had the motivation. And I think this is a very good uh, idea for leaders to do. Try to find out uh, what are the goals of the or the dreams of the employees and match the goal of the team or the goal of the company with the goals of the individuals. Because then you will have a win win situation. They will. In be more engaged in the in the in the workplace, and you fulfill the goal of the team. You fulfill the goal of the company. But there is another. There is a very important but here, and um, I, I also noticed that people, especially leaders, uh, sorry, especially employees, they won't feel comfortable to talk about their dreams with their managers. That's why we need to create that safe environment because otherwise they will not share. And when I ask. Yeah, leaders no, you know what are your yeah what are your yeah. team you know team members dreams and we take them one by one they don't know they, they don't, don't know, know because they, they, they don't ask or even though if they try to ask people are not too open to say something yeah but, but you you should not ask you know you know what, what are your dreams what are your goals like if you never talk about that and now all of a sudden you come into the office and in the next meeting you ask that of course that that will be odd and i'll say well my, my manager her... is crazy <laughs> exactly or, <Something's> wrong. <laughs> or exactly or they want to fire us and they don't know how or whatever right so not at all oh, that yeah, way, yeah. Right? yeah 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 so but so what i'm saying is... is that sorry go, on. Uh, go ahead go ahead i will say after yeah, so what I'm saying is that we should not just go from zero to hero, like in, in one meeting, right? We just kind of <laughs> take it slowly and maybe just ask or not even ask. Maybe ask, what did they do, you know, last, what did they, they do last weekend, for example? Yeah. And, and, you, and you see what are they talking about when they're sharing about how they spend their weekends, how they spend their time off, right? And, and that will give some indications about what it's important to them yes and i would ask i would uh, advise leaders to do something else start by start a discussion by telling what they did in their weekend it's like okay even though i'm the leader i will share okay this weekend i went uh, i went fishing what uh, how did you spend your weekend and of course you can give some few details about that one but start a conversation with putting yourself first giving uh, giving something from your personal yeah from your some something personal from you and that of course, maybe not will happen overnight and uh, for the first meeting, maybe they, the people will say, if you ask them, how did you spend your weekend? Ah, fine, with family, that's it. That's the only thing they say. It's, it's, it's building the trust and um, if it's not working from the first time, try again and again and again until actually you get a real connection with the person and they will be more open to share with you with more details what did they actually spend their weekend. And related to the related to the um, that uh, people not feeling safe to to uh, tell talk to their managers about their dreams, we have this leadership game. We actually have a card in the game that I usually play with leaders and team members. How uh, what is actually your motivation, or how can we build our workplace as a dream 
or a career that you really want to do or a dream job and not just another paid work place. And Absolutely. you should you should see the people how they actually open in in the, that car with that car and how they open with each other because there there is that is a safe playing environment and even though the manager is there and I I usually start with the leader of the team. The oh leader God. of the team is the first to, to 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 answer that card and then go around with somebody who would like to share. But that is one one thing that they can do to to motivate the team and to make them a little bit more open. But start start with you as the leader. That's my Absolutely. advice. And we're gonna actually talk about that, right? So in in the in the Wednesday episode of the leadership for the now, you know, we're gonna be back the two of us on, on that show, and we're gonna talk about how to use gamification in driving cultural change. And Madalena, we're gonna share with us about the leadership game that you could see behind her, and also see here in my, uh, yep, so that you, you see there, and also here in my I library. Also see it, and this, yeah. is, <laughs> this is one of the tools that we actually use at the John Maxwell team and help organizations through uh, to to drive cultural change. So definitely, we're gonna share about that. And on the next two episodes, we're actually going to do something a little bit different than we've done before. Uh, there will be Easter time here in uh, in Sweden and Denmark, so for Catholic Easter uh, this at the end of this week. And also there will be the Orthodox Easter at the end of next week, where Madalena is in Romania. So we're going to do something different. We're going to continue this topic. We're going to continue offline. Madalena and I, we're going to answer all the other questions that we got from you and we also thought will be interesting. And then we're going to provide this recording to you at the day of the show. So next week, you're going to see Madalena and she's going to share you know, what we discussed. And two weeks time from, from now, we're gonna, you're going to see me and I'm going to discuss and share what Madalena and I you know, continue on this, on this topic. And uh, one other announcement on the 28th of April, which is also my, my birthday, I'm going to host a free training. So that's how I like to, you know, to uh, spend my day. And, and we're going to host a free training. We're going to give you five keys to motivate and engage every one of your team members. So it's on this topic, but we're going to much deeper. It's a, about 90 minutes training that was going to be completely free. So there is a link in the comments that you could actually use to register. And I look forward to see you there. So Wednesday at 5 p.m., Madalena and I, Leadership Game. Next two episodes, we're going to continue on this topic on motivating and engaging every one of, of our team members. And we we'll give you more hints on what to do. And on 28, we're going to have uh, a masterclass. We're going to have a free training, 90 minutes training on this topic. Sounds good? Sounds great. I cannot wait. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. So uh, we see you. We see each other on Wednesday for the leadership for the now. And then you're going to see Madalena, uh, you know, next week on Monday. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. Perfect. Right on. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for joining us today. Take care. Bye-bye.